It's time to stop relying on Facebook to keep your business afloat. Hey guys, welcome back to Confessions of a Girl Boss. My name is Chrissy, and I'm here to give you the confidence and the tools you need to launch your online business and thrive. Today, we are talking about Facebook groups, and this is a highly requested topic for me to discuss. For as long as I can remember, Facebook groups have been a super popular way to market to your customers, to attract people to shop with you, and to entice people to keep spending money on your products. And when I did have my physical sticker shop, I did have a Facebook group that I relied on pretty heavily. But as I was going through the motions of running my business and learning new things, I realized that spending so much time on my Facebook group, especially the way that I see a lot of people doing it, is not the way that you really should be approaching it. So today I'm going to be sharing the do's and the don'ts of running a Facebook group for your business. So like I said, when I had my physical sticker shop, I had a Facebook group that I pretty much was in 24 seven. I posted all of my sneak peeks in there first. I went live in there. I asked for opinions in there. And I feel like that's how I see a lot of other sellers using their Facebook groups today. And while I do think that my Facebook group helped my customers get to know me a lot better and definitely helped me to gain feedback and to entice excitement and stuff like that, I definitely think there were a lot of cons to running a Facebook group for my business at the same time. Before we jump into the meat of this video, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that red button down below. I make new videos every week all about turning your passion into your business. And while you're down there, if you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment and let me know if you're on the fence about starting a Facebook group, if you have one and you've learned something from this video, let's chat in the comments. Honestly, you don't even have to let me know if you have a Facebook group. You can let me know what you had for breakfast this morning. Let's just chat down there. Okay, let's go right in and I'm gonna start with the don'ts of a Facebook group. So my first don't is don't rely on your Facebook group to keep your business afloat. And what I mean by this is I see a lot of people when they're running their business really spending, like I said, I was doing, 24 seven in their Facebook groups and kind of neglecting the other social media platforms. And like I said, a Facebook group can be great. It builds community. It helps you become more personable to your customers. But at the same time, a Facebook group really lacks that visibility that you need to attract new customers to your business. So when you're running a Facebook group, you'll more than likely not have the content of that group available unless you are a member of the Facebook group. This is pretty common. I've seen a few groups where you can actually see what people are posting before you join. But the idea here is you want people to join to see the content. But the problem here is that somebody has to actually know who you are and be searching for your group in order to find it, right? So you're not having that organic reach and organic reach of new customers that you need and want within your business. Of course, there are certain ways that your group could be advertised to new people, like Facebook suggests groups, or if you put like hashtags in your group description, or if you put categories in there, but all of the marketing efforts that you're doing within your group are really not helping in the grander scheme of things of attracting new customers to your business. So that's why I always tell people, if you want to have a Facebook group, that's great. Do it. It's totally fun, but just don't rely on it to keep your business afloat. My second don't of Facebook groups goes along the same lines as this, and it's don't spend more time on your Facebook group than you do on your other promotional efforts. This is a really easy trap to fall into because posting in your Facebook group is a lot less stressful because like I said, it's more personable. You don't have to have that like picture perfect quality like you would on Instagram. You don't have to think of hashtags. You don't have to write the perfect caption. It can just be a lot more stress-free. But like I said earlier, if you're focusing so much of your time on your Facebook group, you're really limiting how many new customers you can attract. So while you do want to spend time in your group and you want to get to know your customers better and add value, make sure you're not neglecting your other marketing efforts. This goes along the same lines that I've talked about before, but you also don't own your Facebook group. So you could wake up one morning and your entire Facebook group could be gone. Your entire Facebook profile could be gone and you would have no way to retrieve it. So make sure you're not putting all of your eggs in that one basket. Spread your marketing efforts across Instagram, across your email, 
email list, across your Facebook group, across YouTube. I have videos about how to do all of these things. So I will leave them linked in the description box and up here, I believe. <laughs> but make sure you're spreading out your efforts that you're gaining the most value out of that time that you're putting into marketing your business. Don't number three is something that I definitely fell into myself. And that is don't take everybody's opinions as golden. This goes to any social media platform, obviously, but in your Facebook group, I feel like it's, like I said, it's more personable. And since you're in there interacting as yourself and you're seeing other people interacting as yourself, I feel like opinions hit harder in there. <laughs> so there would be plenty of times when I would ask for feedback on a change that I was thinking of or a design that I was working on. And I would be met with so many conflicting opinions and ideas. So not only was it disheartening, but it also made me think like, whoa, like <laughs> what am I actually doing here? Like nobody seems to like this. And like everything, in life, you're not going to please absolutely everyone every single time. There's rarely going to be one customer who's going to like every single thing that you put out there. So that's really important to remember. And like I said, with how personable Facebook is, it's really hard to kind of separate yourself from those opinions. So while your Facebook group will be a great way to gather feedback and opinions and suggestions for new products and future releases, make sure you're also remembering that this is your business. And yes, you want to create things that people love, but you also want to stay true to who you are. I mean, your business got this far, based on what you did and the work that you've done without any outside opinions. So make sure you remember that and don't let those opinions get to your head too much. And my last don't for Facebook groups is to don't overshare. This is something that I, <laughs> I did a lot when I had my physical sticker business. I was posting vlogs all the time. I was posting personal stuff in my Facebook group on my stories on Instagram. And I still believe that it is very important to show who you are and to let your personality shine and to show behind the scenes of what you're doing. But I definitely think there is a line for me personally. And it's important when you are running your business to know what that line is and to really try Try hard not to cross it. So make sure you're not oversharing too much, whether it's oversharing absolutely everything that you're doing within your business, because then you're also opening yourself up to people copying you, but also oversharing about your personal life. Because like I said, people on Facebook have a lot of opinions. It can feel very, very personable and it can feel really harsh. <laughs> Honestly, if people give you opinions that you're not necessarily either looking for or expecting. So make sure you protect your mental health and don't overshare in your Facebook group or on social media in general. But like I said, I feel like Facebook is just a little bit more personable and it definitely hits a bit harder. <laughs> now let's move on to the do's of running a Facebook group. So the first do, which this sounds weird as soon as I'm saying it out loud, but you get, you get what I mean. <laughs> the first do is to have have an incentive for people to join your group. So if you're anything like me, joining too many Facebook groups is really overwhelming and it's just not something that I'm really into these days. So having an incentive for people to join is really important. It's along the same lines of having an incentive for people to sign up to your email list. You want something that will attract people to join your Facebook group and to want to stick around. So a few examples might be maybe a sale code that you're only promoting in your Facebook group, maybe a discount code that they can use all year round, um, maybe an exclusive live stream, maybe a link to a free download. There are definitely ways that you can and should entice people to join your Facebook group. And if you are watching this and you have another idea, make sure you leave it in the comment down below. Number two is to make your Facebook group fun. And my Facebook group was honestly the most fun place that I posted on because I was totally myself. There was no pressure involved and I could just kind of post whatever I wanted. So make sure you're making your Facebook group fun. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to do giveaways all the time. I didn't do giveaways a lot, but make sure you're posting like enticing threads that people can comment on, even if they're not necessarily related to your business. Just make it a fun place for people to be and to interact with each other. Number three is to add value. And like I've said about email lists, YouTube, Instagram, you always want to be providing value to your customers, to your clients, to your audience, and Facebook groups are no exception. So this might seem overwhelming to be providing value and creating content for all of these platforms 
platforms, but it's also possible, especially in a Facebook group, to kind of create teams for your Facebook group. And I've seen a few shops do this where they will have like a Facebook crew or just a Facebook team that will go into the group from time to time, provide tutorials, do live streams, um, provide tips and stuff like that on how you could use certain products that are in your business. So the pressure is taken off you as the business owner, but your audience is still gaining that value surrounding your products that you sell. Adding value is probably the number one way that you're going to get people to stick around in your Facebook group for the long term. My fourth tip is to promote your Facebook group on your other social media platforms. Don't be afraid to promote it and ask people to join and share that incentive that you have. Like I said, Facebook isn't really going to do a lot to promote your group for you. So you want to make sure that you're promoting it anywhere that you can. My fifth and somewhat of a bonus tip is to set rules for your Facebook group and make sure you're moderating your group so that people are following them. And if this sounds like something that's a little too overwhelming or going to be too much work, maybe you can hire someone to moderate your group for you, but nobody likes a Facebook group that's really negative all the time. And you want to make sure people are following those rules. Of course, there's a time and a place for certain discussions that come into play throughout the year or when things happen, but make sure that people are keeping your Facebook group on topic and not veering off to a place that might not be warranted within your group. So those are my do's and don'ts for running a Facebook group for your business. I hope this video was helpful. Like I said, if you have any other tips for running a group, make sure you leave it in a comment down below. Also let me know in a comment down below if you would like me to create a Confessions of a Girl Boss Facebook group. I've been toying with the idea. Um, so it's definitely something that's on my mind. So let me know if you would be interested in joining that in a comment down below. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. You can hit the red button down below or you can hit my face right here. And if you want to keep on learning, be sure to check out those two videos to my left and you can do just that. So I hope you all have a great day and stay safe. Have a great weekend and I will see you on Monday. Bye.